It is Saturday, December 4th in the NBA, and my three best bets plus two extra leans are on the way. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot, and boy, did we have a day yesterday. Let's recap it. We were 8-3 and three over the past two days. We were 6-2 and two overall yesterday, 3-2 and two in the video, but we added three extra plays on our Twitter and in the comment section down below and in our Discord, so make sure you follow us at Call on Our Shot if you aren't already, and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We're almost at 15,000 subscribers, less than 500 away. We can't do it without your guys' support. Now, let's talk about the three added plays. Isaac Okoro under in points, Cole Anthony's over in PRAs, Christian Wood over in rebounds, easy money, all three of those guys cashed for us. Now what about the other plays? Warriors minus six, didn't have to sweat that one out too much after the second half. Eight and under 11 and a half rebounds. I think he ended up with six rebounds, maybe seven. And the Wizards team total under 106 and a half points. You'll love to see that. All six winners are two losses. Karis LeVert under 24 and a half PRAs. Felt like the refs had us out, had a, had something out to get for us. He attempted 11 free throws. Previous season high was seven. So what can you do about that? And Luka Doncic under eight and a, or over eight and a half assists. Yeah, I mean, what can you do? I mean, he he absolutely had seven assists and seven turnovers. We'll talk about him in a little bit. And of course, the parlay falls because Luca was in it, and Bradley Beal didn't feel like getting any assists. But let's talk about it. Hopefully, you made some money off the picks. And if you did, consider clicking that like button down below. Only takes a couple seconds. Three last notes. Number one, college football. We have a bunch of championship games on today. Logan's giving out his best bets. Go check out those videos. They are all linked down below. And at the end of the video, number two. NFL Best Bets for Week 13 is live on the channel, but our parlays and player props video will be live later tonight, Saturday on at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We are 13-3 and three over our last four weeks, so make sure you check out that video. And third note, you guys know we are sponsored by Dimers now. We have a bunch of exclusive sportsbook bonus offers for you guys, so in case you want to check them out, you should definitely click the first link in the description. It's dimers.com slash COS. We really appreciate it, and it helps support this people at COS, Logan, and myself. And let's talk about our best bet of the day. And we're going to start with Kyle Lowry, under 8.5 assists, minus 134 on FanDuel. But let's gather around, my friends, because today is a big day because this must be done. And you guys know I love giving out a best bet. But if you saw the record on the screen, it feels it feels like it's cursed. It feels like it's putting an odds boost on a player. And I hate putting on odds boosts. And Luka Doncic was our latest victim as he had 7 assists and 7 turnovers. So I'm drawing my line in the sand. I say if this bet cashes... The segment stays. If it loses, the segment goes away until 2022. I don't make the rules. The ball is in your court, Vegas. If you like watching the videos, since I'm sure you're watching right now, thinking about already doing your Kyle Lowry fixing, nope. Well, you guys know what the rules are. So we're taking Kyle Lowry. Let's talk about him. If this doesn't cash, best bet will be going away. I'll update the records and whatnot. But Kyle Lowry under eight and a half assists. Now, currently, it's only available on FanDuel, minus 134. And could that be the best odds we see all day? Maybe. Could it be the worst odds we see all day? Also, maybe. I'm not really sure, but I'll take it. And now you look at Lowry. He's averaging 7.6 assists per game. And I understand why the line's eight and a half because Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo are both out. So really, the ball's going to be in Kyle Lowry's hands a little bit more than he normally ever has it. Now, in 21 games this season, Lowry gone under this in 13 of them, 62% of the time. Now today, he takes on the Milwaukee Bucks, who we're not sure if Giannis will be out there. He was he was randomly ruled out in their last game. He's, I, I believe I saw he was doubtful today, so I'm not expecting him to be out there, and that's fine. If he is, even better. But Chris, Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday will both be there, and that's fine with me. Now in 34 games in his career versus Milwaukee, he's averaging just six assists per game, and majority of those coming as a Toronto Raptor. Now, that includes going under this line in seven straight games versus the Milwaukee Bucks as a whole, and 13 of his last 14, he's gone under that. Now, on top of that, the Bucks are allowing the ninth fewest assists per game to opposing point guards and the seventh fewest as a team overall. And also, let's talk about his usage right now, because obviously Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, both out. So you saw... Kyle Lowry's usage rate, I believe, jump up to about 27, 28% last night. Now, let's talk about his career when he's had a 25% or more higher usage rate. Now, obviously, yesterday, he did hit the over. He ended with nine assists, and the only other game he had that over 25% usage rate this season, he had four assists, so splitting down the middle. Now, over his last 25 career games with a 25% or higher usage rate, which is pretty high, he's gone, and that goes back to about December of 2019, so we're not picking games that are like back in 2012. No, that's... In been basically 2020 till now in 25 career games with 25% or higher usage rate. He's gone under in 16 of those, those 25 games, 64% of the time. So combine that with a good defense for the Milwaukee Bucks, plus a few amount of guys that can really make shots on this Miami Heat team out left out there, plus a potential for a blowout because the, the Heat blew out the Bucks earlier this season. Wouldn't surprise me if it's the opposite of that. I'll be taking Kyle Lowry under eight and a half assists. Remember Vegas, if you're watching this, 
line in the sand, give us this winner. Now let's move on to another one, and this is an early game. Julius Randle under one and a half three pointers, plus 110 on Caesars, also plus money on FanDuel. Now, this is an early 1 p.m. game, so if it's past that time in the day, you can probably 1 p.m. Eastern time, you can probably just scroll past this and get into our next play as well as our two leans of the day, or just let the video play out. And hopefully we are one and zero on the day because this game's at 1 p.m. as all the other games start at 8 p.m. or later. Now Randall. He's cashed his force before, so we're coming back to the well. Last game, he scored 30 points, didn't attempt a single three-pointer, and that's exactly what we talked about. As prior to November 20th, and I believe the first, I don't know, I think 15 or 16 games of the season, Randall was attempting 6.3 three-pointers a game, knocking them down at only about 34, 35% clip, which is well below last year's career mark, which was about 41 to 42%. Now, I don't know who told him, whether it was maybe he watched the videos or maybe he has a friend or maybe he has a coach that told him, yo, stop shooting threes. You're, doing, you're not shooting them well and we need you to go use your size, athleticism, go get get to the rim or shoot your mid-range shot, shot, something you're much better at doing. And that's exactly what he's done over the last six games. Over the last six games as a whole, he's just shooting 2.3 threes per game and he's only making 14% of those. So I can't imagine he's like, all right, I'm hitting 14% of these guys. Let's fire a little bit more up. Now he's gone under this line in six straight games, and he hasn't hit a single three-pointer in four consecutive games. Now, on top of that, they take on the Nuggets, who, like I said, at 1 p.m. Eastern time, who, despite last game when they let the Magic shoot 70% from the field, well, 70% from non-three-pointers, they've still been a very good defense as a whole, especially defending the three-point line. Now, currently, the Nuggets given up the fifth-fewest makes per game, so fifth-fewest three-pointers made in a game the ninth fewest attempts as a whole, so they're not facing a ton of attempts running people off the line, and the ninth lowest three-point percentage. Even when they're getting them up, still not making a lot of them. Now, Randall has played the Nuggets 17 times in his career, and he's gone over this line just twice. Now, I understand this a little bit misleading, so I'm not going to really use that stat, because earlier on in Randall's career, he didn't really attempt a lot of threes, which... Honestly, we've come full circle because he's not attempting a lot of threes these days, but in his last four games versus the Nuggets, he's only gone over the, he's attempting over nearly five threes a game in those games. He's only hit the over once. And lastly, I wanted to think about the guy that will be guarding Julius Randle, which will be Aaron Gordon. And Aaron Gordon obviously has only played only about a year or so with the Nuggets, but he's played with the Magic a lot and Randle's played against the Magic a lot as well. In his last six games versus Aaron Gordon, only gone over this once. I'll keep riding with the trend with Randle. Hopefully he can cash another plus money winner and we'll ride with them best odds on Caesars plus 110 and we have a sign up bonus for Caesars down below so go check that out now moving on to my only spread pick of the day and it's not really a spread because we're just taking their money line Celtics money line versus the Trailblazers now I know we're here the Boston Celtics coming off a game where they probably could have won against the Utah Jazz although Donovan Mitchell wanted to take over mode towards the end of the game but they fought and they lost and so they're on a back-to-back -back. now taking on the Blazers who you know, I don't love fading the Blazers at home as they're 10-2 and two straight up, 8-4 and four against the spread, but this is a different Blazers team. They not only will be without Damian Lillard, which, yeah, I think that makes a little bit of a difference, but they'll also be without Anthony Simons and Nasir Little, all guys that are very important to the roster. They aren't a very deep roster, that is for certain. Now, the Celtics, as of this moment, they should have everyone healthy. Now, I'm sure we'll get a Jason Tatum is out at like 7.55 p.m., but I think he'll be out there. And Jalen Brown, who rested yesterday, I'd imagine he's back out. He's currently says out on a bunch of different injury, uh, injury websites, but I think he'll be back out there. He just rested yesterday. It wasn't an injury-related one. Now, it's no big deal if he isn't out there because... The Blazers team just got spanked by 31 points to the San, by the San Antonio Spurs in their home arena. And that's not really uncommon because they've lost four of their last five games without Damian Lillard. Their one win was against the Detroit Pistons a couple games ago. Yeah, that's the Detroit Pistons. And the game before that, with, which they've only missed three games without Dame this season, yeah, it was a 29-point loss to the Nuggets. So they got, obviously, CJ McCollum out there and Norm Powell. That's about all they got for scoring. And then they got Yusuf Nurkic, which the Celtics team is notoriously very good at defending opposing center, opposing centers. Now the Celtics are 6-4 and four after a loss, just straight up after a loss this season. But more importantly, they're 3-1 and one straight up on back-to-back. So they have actually been pretty good against teams when they have no rest. And so I'll be riding with them. They've beaten the Thunder, the Heat, the Hornets off no rest. Their only loss was two points to the Cleveland Cavaliers, which are absolutely on a tear. So I'll ride with them, Portland. 
They've also beaten Portland in three of their last four matchups, six of their last nine overall, and they've beaten the Blazers four of their last five in their home arena in the Moda Center. I'll ride with them. And all of those games had Damian Lillard today. They obviously don't. I'll ride with the Boston Celtics to get the win. Minus 115 on BetMGM. Now let's go talk about these two leans, and you'll understand why they're leans, because they don't have lines for them. We're talking about the first one, Kevin Durant, the Slim Reaper over in points or PRAs. Now, I don't know which one I'll go with, and I'll update the pinned comment with both of these two guys down below, and then you and decide if we're actually playing them or just leaving them alone. Now, we don't know if Durant will be active tonight. He's on the back-to-back, -back, so you just never know in the NBA these days. They could just rest him altogether. But I like what I got with Kevin Durant if he does go out there and play today. Now, you talk about the Bulls. That's who they're taking on, Bulls versus Nets. And sure, you look at the Bulls, their defense has been, you know, highly rated this season. They're currently ranked seventh. Now, that is a little bit misleading as they're one point different from the seventh between like the 14th defense. So really about, you know, better than average, but not necessarily a top 10 defense. They're right in that kind of category, 10 to 12. But as a whole, they don't have anyone that can guard Kevin Durant. And the reason that their defense has been so good is because of the duo of Alex Caruso and Lonzo Ball. Now, unfortunately, neither of those guys can guard Kevin Durant. And truthfully, we can take a step back. Not really a lot of people in the NBA can guard Kevin Durant, but those guys can't match up with him size-wise. Really, not a lot of the league can. He can just shoot right over him, but that is especially prominent for those two guys. Now, last time these two teams matched up, Durant, 38 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists. And that wasn't a huge shock as they don't have an elite defending forward. Their only elite defending forward, Patrick Williams, and I believe he's out for the season with an injury. Now, Durant, filled up the, he's been filling up the stash, stat sheet especially with assists recently. I think we'll be able to crowd some rebounds. So I'll ride with Kevin Durant's over in points or PRAs. We'll see if we get a line and we'll see if he's active. Now my last one, Luka Doncic, under in points versus the Grizzlies. Now you might be thinking, Austin, I know you're going for revenge. Luka hurt you yesterday. Why are you going for his under? Under in points and a superstar? Yeah, I understand it. And it's, I promise it's not revenge. It's more so... I just don't, it's not a great matchup for Luka. Now, hopefully Kristaps Porzingis is back and we'll see what this line is. Now, I'm gonna attempt to project the line. I'm gonna say it's gonna be 25 and a half points and maybe 26. I'd love 26 and a half, but I think it'll be between 25 and a half to 27 and a half. Now, Luka has struggled like a lot of other guards against the Grizzlies. In his career, he scored under 25 and a half points in all, all but one game. He's been played seven career games, gone under this line in six of them, and he's averaging just 20.6 points per game, 25% from three-pointer and 41% from the field, and a large part of that is Dylan Brooks, one of the best elite defending guard, guard guys in the NBA. He's always harassing people 94 feet, and he's just been a pest to people on the opposing, and he's guarding them, and that will be the guy who will be guarding Luka today. Now, let's assume this line's 25 and a half. Like I said, he's gone under in six of seven matchups. Number two, he's averaging 25.4 points per game, so it's not necessarily, you know, obviously you could go out there and drop 40 tonight, make us look like a fool, a boy the clown nose and everything, but still, this is Luka. He's gone under 25 and a half points in eight of 18 games so far this season. If you move that line up to, to and that actually would be six, he's gone under in I believe 10 of his last 16 as a whole. And if you look at it, if that line goes up to 26, he's gone under in 10 of those last 16 games overall this season. Now, if the line were a little bit higher, we'll see what we do about it, but I still like our chances. He could finish around these numbers. He's been doing it constantly this season, but I think I'll take Lucas under in points, depending on if Kristaps Porzingis is in or out. But we'll see what line we get. As always, I'll update the pinned comment, as well as if we add any other additional plays, which I doubt we will, because Saturday is always a weird day in the NBA. But that'll do it for this video. Check out the pinned comment down below for the updated plays. Check out the videos on the screen, college football and NFL best bets videos. I'll see you guys later tonight in the player props video for the NFL in week 13. Been on a tear on that one. We have some cool things coming to that video as well. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Click that subscribe button. If you're new, click the Dimers link down below to check out some exclusive sportsbook bonus offers. We appreciate you. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.